my man available again or not? <laughs> I say, I told Grant, Grant walked the road with these men. I said to him, my brother, when they started in the congregation, he spoke to them. Now you must not just lift your eyes to the Lord, you must lift your eyes and then lift your eyes to the Lord. <laughs> when you speak to the man, great, praise the Lord. What are we saying? My brother, me and you, we are because of the word. Where is the word? Was, it is, and it is to come. Before creation, the word was there. The word was God. The word is God. Hello. <clears throat> Everything will be shaken except the word. And in the context of the word, we can be. In the context of the word, we are created. Because of the word, creation is there. Because of the word, we are there. But everything was planned from the beginning. Where did it begin? It began with a word. But where did the word begin? Is beyond our understanding because we are looking in the context of time and the word is outside of the context of time you with me so will you and I grasp it no if we can grasp everything then it is in the context of time then I think we created the word the word is God then we created God but God is so much more beyond us amen so as we speak, it's because of the word that we can be. Give him a hand. <coughs> first point, please write down, but not first of all to go and look at this again, but to look at it right now and to hear what God is saying to you right now and to deal with what God is saying to you right now. Amen. Amen. This is a time of dealing when the Spirit is dealing with you. You are speaking to Him. He's speaking to you. When you walk out here, you didn't hear a sermon. You didn't hear a teaching. You were changed by the Word. You received the Word. You honored the Word. And when you receive the Word and you honor the Word, God will do mighty things in you. Right there. Right then. The origin of the Word. Where is the origin of the Word of hurt, disappointment, sin? Success, failure, in the reality of experience, circumstances, past. My brother, my sister, you can go through certain things. Many times in counseling, people will say, where does this come from? Where does this fear come from? Where does this hurt come from? Because based on hurt, you received words. And now today, based on that hurt, that hurt are giving you words how to hurt others. How to have issues with others. How not to trust others. Because this hurt inside of you. You gave definition to that hurt. Because you took that hurt in you. Oh, that's easy to say. But first of all, I'm asking the origin of that hurt. Where is it? Where is the origin of the word that you live by? <coughs> oh, you know the story... Yes, I was so full of fear. I can do nothing in the sense of I cannot speak to five people. I cannot read a Bible verse in front of 20 students. No. This fear is consuming me. Why? And I cannot break through. doesn't matter how I can bring in a performance of excellence in whatever way. It, I'm not breaking through. This is me. Until one day the Holy Spirit shows me. He showed me. The origin of the word. How I was a baby in hospital, mom and dad, there was a lack of fight. And both of them walked out. And it was, whoosh, there, the fear came in. Then I was like 23. Went to them, they can still remember the fight that they had. Hello? There was the origin of the word. It came from there. But I can cancel that word in the name of Jesus. Now, we don't need to know everything of everything that's happening to us. Where did it come from? 
But it's good to understand that it comes from certain situations, experiences. Even if you cannot identify all of that, no, so what? If the Spirit, if you ask the Spirit, Spirit and the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, then it is because the Spirit wants you to deal with that specifically. Amen? <coughs> so let's not get frantic about everything in our lives. Okay, where does this come from? Where does this come from? No. But where is the origin of the word of true love, hope, healing, freedom, success, and fulfillment? It's in the reality of God himself. It's in the reality of God himself. Scripture says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was outside the context of time. What are we saying, my brother? You can live by a word that is beyond time. Or you can live by a word based on something that you went through. Hello? I can be hurt, but I can decide that I forgive. I apply truth because there's a word that I will live by. And that is originating from before creation. And I want that eternal word. I want the words of eternity in my heart. I want eternal words to be in my heart. Word that is truth that sets me free. Word, words from that place where I will go beyond the frame of time. And I will have quality eternal life. Quality eternal life that I can have now as I decide I will not be a product of my circumstances. And the words what I live by is not I will not be a robot. And how I live is how I am programmed by my circumstances, how I'm programmed by my past. That is how I live as a robot. But do you want to live free from experiences, free from whatever the past would be, positive or negative? Now there's a success. There's something that I can live by. And that is if I can receive the word. Where do you come from? Where do you come from? My life was hidden. For eternity before creation was created. In the heart of the Father. Hello? You with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? Don't react on anything that happens in your life. React to what Christ has done for you. Not just on the cross. Before all the foundation of the earth, the lamb was slain. Before the foundation of the earth, the lamb was slain. Beyond the context of time, God's plan was already set for me and you. Because he was already, you and I, we were already in his heart. We must be able to look beyond the context of time and our life here on earth. And live a life with eternal value. Eternal value. Let's say, I will live a life with eternal value. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. So you find that by the Holy Spirit, the disappointments, the sin, success, failures, and make sure that you don't live by that first of all. But you will live... By the word of God that is before everything started. Great. And you bring that into today. In the beginning was the word. Yes, we said that. Number two. The value of the word. The origin of the word. In God is the value of the word. Because this word is God himself. God became man when the word became flesh. Are you with me? The Word was in the beginning, and the Word was God. It's not this book. This book is giving definition of who He is. But He was and is the Word. Amen? And through the Word, everything was created. But God became man. How? When the Word became flesh. Who are you? You are flesh. Why? Because you originate from the word that was in the heart of God. He is the, com the full, complete, perfect word that is Christ. 
But you are coming because of, you came here on earth because of a word in the heart of the Father. You became flesh because there was a word in the heart of the Father. Me, let us create, let us make that woman, that man. Dickens, Bronwyn, yes, yes. But that thought, that word was in his heart beyond time, from eternity, and will be to eternity. You with me? And because of the word in the heart of the Father, you have such awesome value. But there's other words around you that you are telling, will tell you, you are nothing, man. You will never make it. You will go from crisis to crisis. <clears throat> it will always be a struggle. Because in your personality, you have this personality, and so you will always struggle with it. Now you're not good with this, so you're not good with that. And all that words you are being intimate with, let's get it out. He's giving you no value. But you are, and you are valuable, because you were and you are a word in his heart. Amen. The word gave value to creation. Why? <coughs> Everything waited for the word to be spoken, even the Holy Spirit. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. What am I saying? My brother, my sister, the Christ is not formed in you. You are formless if the word is not over your life. The next point is, and then God said, then God said, let there be light. And poof, there was light. Over and in everything. Beyond, 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 beyond. And there was light. Everything, there was an anticipation. But everything was formless and empty. And darkness was there. Without his word coming into your life. And there was light. And you became a child of God and more. You became a new creation. And so for every facet of your life. Without that, your life is formless. It's empty. And there's darkness. Everybody say formless. Empty. Darkness. Until. That's you. In the area of relationships, in the area of your finances, in the area of whatever. You can put there all that areas of your life. And this is the state that you are in until you allow the word to come in. And that brings value in that area of your life. That brings value in that area of your life. The Spirit of God was also waiting for the word. Now I want to say to you, <coughs> give me another man. Die man la langs jou, van Francois. So as he is here, let's say in his life there's nothing happening. I say so. Nothing is happening. It's formless. It's darkness. It's empty. And the Spirit of God is hovering. Because there's a word. There's a word from God. There's so much word spoken over this man. There's such an excellent life that is spoken over him by God himself. There's such an awesome destiny. Hello. There's such an awesome value that God wants to add in him, through him, in his relationships, in his destiny, in his finances, in where he is, where he will walk, what he will say, what he will do. There's such an excellence and an eternal life with eternal value. The Spirit is hovering. But nothing of that will happen. And he will die empty. With darkness. Formless. Unless he receives in his heart what God has spoken. The value of the word. The word is there. 
and the Spirit is there. But the Spirit will only react on the Word of God. Then God said, and when He hears what God has said, and He takes it, what God has said, there, on the Word that is taken there, boom, the Spirit comes and He brings light, and He brings forth that what is from the heart of God. And so for every area of His life, more and more, that area in your life that you must ask the Holy Spirit this week, that area in my life that is formless, is nothing is shaping up in that area. It's void. There's nothing. There's, it's empty. And ask the Spirit, where's that area in your life, areas? Hello? Thank you. So much can happen. But my brother and my sister, so the same. Not just the spirit. The demonic world is over you. He's all over. Looking for a place. Looking for a place. Tien said this afternoon, or oh, I let to me, remember that scripture also. The strong man inside here, the devil, was, not is. <laughs> Driven out. And if you don't bring in the word, if you don't fill it up, and you leave it empty, and you leave it formless, and you leave it in darkness, hello, that spirit will come back with seven others, worse than each one of them, when he, than himself. And they will come and find the place empty. No word of God was established in this, man, this man's life. Let him be seven times more filled with hell and the forces from hell. Let it not be so. That yes, you gave your life to Christ, but you have not filled your life. That empty, formless, darkness places. You didn't fill it with who he is. But you received the word of religion, the word of performance, the word of trying again, the word of trying to be a good person. And nothing is working. It's still empty. It's messy. It's formless. Nothing is shaping with your, with your ideas for your business. Nothing is shaping in your relationships. Nothing. You don't get the breakthroughs. But God's grace is there. Why? Because the Spirit is still there. I'm with you. See, I'm with you. Take courage. I'm with you. Be strong. I'm, for I'm with you. Be strong and work. Work. For I'm with you. Don't fear. I'm with you. What does he say? The Spirit of God will be hovering over you. He will be there. He will be there. For God believes that you will receive His Word for every area of your life. Such a value that you bring in your life when you receive the Word. And the Spirit will let it bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Amen. Let's go for this man. To what words do you add value in your life? The word of fear, anger, shortcomings, and finances. Okay, this is going ahead, but let's say that one day your works as well as heaven and earth will be tested and shaken by the word, the word of God. But what words do you add value to in your life? The word of fear. If you are driven by the word of fear, what does it mean? Yes, fear can come tomorrow in your life. But I can decide I will give no words to that fear. I will say, I will put words, but I will take the word from God vroom, against that fear. Perfect love. Thank you, Father. Drives out all fear. And maybe it's not just in, the, in quoting that one scripture that it will happen. Maybe it is I must make a study of love, about who, what is God's love all about. And I see more and more the articulation of His love through the Word. And the more I understand the articulation of, his, of what love is, more and more fear is driven out. <laughs> because I don't give words to fear. I don't value that. I don't value the hurt. I don't value the bitterness. I don't value the anger. Yeah, this is going to happen in the country and that and that. And we can talk about politics, but in a such a way that the demonic world is finding a place in you to bring forth that what is rubbish. Oh, yes, you can see everything, 
but what you will add to whatever the politics will say and whatever will happen in the country, what will you add? You will add the Word of God. And when you take the Word of God, the Spirit of God will take it. Amen. And there will be light. If there's formless, emptiness, darkness in this country, why? The Spirit of God is also over this country. But why? Because God is speaking, but the church is not receiving. God is speaking, but the church reacts on what the Word is saying out there. There's such a lot of things. Go and read the newspapers, even today's one. And you'll see such a lot of things happening. Words being spoken and so many things need to submit to the word. And the church will have to submit to the word from hell. And the word from the enemy. And the word from the spirit of the world. If the church don't honor the word of God by receiving the word of God. So that for South Africa, God can say, let there be light. And if can, God can do it for the universe like that. So much more. As his agents, you and me, standing here and say, on earth as it is in heaven. And heaven is the radiance of the beauty of his light. So the radiant beauty of your light will shine forth in this nation as the church will rise up. Hello. And say, I receive. God has spoken and I declare what he has said to this nation. Amen. Let's go. Number three. <clears throat> That's the value of the word. Number three will be. A time is set aside for the word. Now we said. The word was. The word is. And the word will always be. Amen. And then God created something. And that is called time. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. I'm the alpha and the omega. What is it saying? In what I create. I'm there in the beginning because I created it. And I will be the end because I will give the end result and I will say at the end of it all, what happened, what will happen now, and how is the future determined by what I created, called creation in the context of time. The beginning and the end. I am the beginning and the end. In me, everything is created. First of all, I've created time. And the word... There is a certain time for everything in the world to happen. There is a time set apart for Jesus, God, to become a man and to die on a cross. And at that time, it will happen. The word was spoken. Lamb slain as from the foundation of the earth. But there is a time set aside for that word to become flesh on earth. There are times for your life where the word that is spoken over your life, that you, you, by the grace of God, better be there where God wants you to be, to receive that word, and don't to, not to miss out on what he has for you. Oh, amen? Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. This is part of my day word. Revelation 22, verse 10. Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book. Because these words must fit into a specific time frame. Because they must hear it now. Because these words must be fulfilled now. Are you with me? Certain words are sealed over your life. God will only reveal to you certain things at the right time. So that you don't mess up that word. But that you can earth that word at the right time. And so many times we are frustrated about certain words and we don't see the result. We don't see things happening in my life about certain areas. But is God protecting me? Because my life is not ready to bring that word down on earth. Because his word can destroy me. Because everything will be shaken and everything will be destroyed by the unshakable. And that is the word of God. But build accurately and let the word at the right time that you take it and you are building in your life the unshakable. And you will have an unshakable life. 
with God. Amen? As His Word is the most precious to you. Let's go. The prophetic word explains time frames. We talked about that a little bit. A time is set aside for lies and stress. Performance, the negative, to become a reality. Set aside by who? Set aside by hell. For you. There's certain times set aside for you. Where the enemy knows tomorrow there will be stress. Or tomorrow there will be things that you need to face that you feel that you are in a weakness. Tomorrow evening there will be a temptation and the enemy knows that you are weak. And that time is set aside for you to fall. And the word is there, you will fail. You don't put the word of God in your life when that time is there. The word spoken over your life from hell, it will come to pass. There are certain times set aside for you for distraction. It's set aside for you to fall in that lust, to come into a place of bitterness, to come in a place of suddenly to judge others. A time set aside for you to close your heart towards people that you thought you can trust. These times are set aside for you. Will you react on that and give words and say, based on the word of that, what happened? I close my heart. And it will be done to you according to the word from hell. Or no. Let's go on. The time is set aside for the words of God to be heard, the truth. Despite the word of facts. The, the facts are they hurt me. The facts are I'm in this financial crisis. The facts are I cannot pay my studies. The facts are I don't get it right. I fail every time. The facts are I'm struggling with discipline. That's the facts. Of a lot of things. But in the midst of the facts, there is every time, there is a time set aside for me to get into this word, and to take the truth, to set me free from whatever the word of the enemy and the word from the world want to put on me. I will not fail. When the opportunity is there that God has for me to do certain things in my life, by the grace of God, I don't have to fail. Extra oil, extra time with the foundations. At that moment, what will come out? You have the sponge and suddenly, boom. Suddenly, boom, it's, the pressure is there. <clears throat> what comes out immediately? It's not a choice. What is coming out? That what is inside. What are you putting in today? Because that time that is set aside for distraction for you because you are putting in words of bitterness or negative words and then it's time for you to put all the negative in your heart and judging people and play around with judging, play around with criticism, play around with I'm rejected, no I'm not rejected. If people smile, yes I'm accepted by God. If they don't smile or do some bad things against me, I'm not accepted. I don't feel accepted. I don't feel cared for. It's up and down, up and down. The enemy's sitting back because sometime he will just do boom. It's set aside for you to fail. Well, at this time, you understand the time that I will take time with a word. Because at this specific time, this word will be needed. And when, this, when the pressure will be there or when certain things will happen in my life, what will come out? The word. And that word will be fulfilled. I am more than a conqueror. So when everything around me is going to fail, I will conquer. When the world around me will fail, I will not fail. Why? Because I took the word in my heart. And when the opportunity is there for that word to be fulfilled, when the time is there for you to rise up and show the world that victory is in Christ, and God has set aside that time for you to show victories in Christ. It will be in the time when everything will fall around you, you will not fall. Amen. Time set aside for you. Yes. 
By whom is the time determined? We talked about that. Next point. Number four. A place is set aside for the word. A place. I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard posts. There I will wait to see what the Lord says. What am I saying? There's a place, my brother, that God has for you. And specifically in that place, you better stand. Prayer is positioning. So through prayer, I'm positioning myself in a place and say, God, there where I am, what must I do? Flee. No. There where I am, I must climb up to my watchtower and stand my guard post. I will, there I will wait to see what the Lord says. I will wait to see if the Lord is going to say something. No. The Lord will say something. This is Habakkuk. In chapter 1, he's crying out, he's screaming out to God, God, how many times have I cried out to you? And you, there's nothing. I see nothing that you do. I'm hearing nothing. It feels to me like you are doing nothing. You are hearing nothing. So he's so intensely desperate in chapter 1. But he makes a decision in chapter 2, even though all the circumstances are just so... 100% against me. All the voices of circumstances, the facts are screaming at me. I will not allow these words, these voices to consume me and for me to drown in all of that. I will rise up above it. Because when I rise up above it, I know my God is speaking. And I will wait to see what the Lord says. Because he will say something. That is for sure. Maybe the circumstances will not change. But he will speak. Because I'm his son. Because you are his daughter. He will speak. The father will speak to his son and his daughter. Amen. Let's go. Bolt and place your watchtower there where God placed you. In the midst of the reality of where you are. My brother, my sister, is not to first to flee out of the place where you are. But there where you are, you need to build a watchtower. How will I build the watchtower in the midst of that temptation and how the world is and how the world will do it and my shortcomings and my whatever I will have and my opinions? I will take the word and I will start to build. I am more than a conqueror in Christ. I'm accepted by the Lord. God rejoices over me with singing. I don't have to walk in performance. And more and more I'm laying the bricks. Bringing the stairs. And I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up. As I built with a word. I built with a word. This watchtower. And the more I take the word in my heart. A place is set aside for the word. And the word will be like your watchtower. Because when you have this vocabulary, this becomes foundation, the revelation of who Christ is. Amen? So you build the watchtower. And you can only build it when you have the word in you. You have no word in you. You can say how many times you can quote that scripture, I'm standing on my watchtower. Whatever. Some other balloon thing. You know the castles where the children are playing with? Playing on, on. Jumping castles. That's all that you can have. The enemy just come and pull the plug. There's your watchtower. It's just a nice show for him. He just pull it and see how you will fall. Getting my clown skip. Are you with me? How will you build it? If you know the word. So don't confess the scripture. I am standing on my watchtower. It means nothing. If you don't take the word and build the watchtower with the word, with the word, so that when the enemy wants to say a lot of things, he cannot. Because you have a perspective here in your watchtower over your situations. Like we always say, seated with Christ in heavenly places is the New Testament reality. This is a picture of that in your watchtower. So where you are, build a watchtower. Not trust the Lord to flee. But trust the Lord to build. And from that place, above your circumstances, if God then says, move, then you move. But if not, 
you will say and speak forth what God is saying. Amen. Great. There we go. Build a fortress of bitterness, unforgiveness, and a battle in the midst of where you are. They say that's an English saying also, thick skinned. Dirk Feller. Okay. Dirk Feller. What is that? What does that mean? It's like people say things against me, and I will just build something against that words. No, that's not, that's not what you're supposed to build. Hello? That's a fortress of bitterness. No. And fear what people can do to you. Now you build this place so that because you fear what people can say about you. No, that's not the safe place. The safe place is where God is speaking. Are you with me? So I will not <coughs> build with the words of bitterness. Because that word of bitterness, you cannot trust people. They lie to you. They talk behind your back. And you take that words and you believe. Faith is by hearing. Hearing is from the word. The same about the negative. Faith is by hearing. Hearing is based on the word. You take the word of, he did this to me. You cannot trust him. Men are always like this. Women, don't even try. Hello? Life goes on. Life, let me not say what Vika said. Okay. Is your met me? And with all that you can build. And you are building. And you are building a life. <clears throat> Place is set aside for the word. Place is set aside in this country for a certain word. And the people will say, there's no future in this place. We need to move. The people will say, this is going to happen and that and all the condemnation, all the negative things. And so many people, millions are building a fortress of rubbish. Unless the church rise up and suddenly what they wanted to build, here it is. But suddenly there's a watchtower up there. Because the church woke up in Jesus' name. And speaking forth the word. Setting things in place. So that with higher authority, the king is speaking through kings in the country. And say what will happen and what will not happen. Amen? Let's go for it. Number five. A receiver is set aside for the word. Who's supposed to receive it? Then the Lord said, write the face. And it was a vision that he said to Habakkuk. Write the vision, write the face, and engrave it on tablets. Go for it. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. It was a picture in the Old Testament of what's supposed to happen. Because what will happen? There's a receiver of the word. The receiver of the word is not a printed paper. The receiver of the word is your heart and my heart. My mind, your mind. That's the receiver of the word. Not printed paper. Are you with me? Who will receive this word that was from there to there? Who will receive it on earth? Let it be done to me according to your word. I receive your word. Mary received his word and through that the son was born. Amen. You receive his word and so much more of the son will be seen. She received the word and the perfect son of God was seen. You receive the word and as you, as you grow with the word that you receive from him, more and more and more and more of Christ will be seen. Or you receive the word of bitterness and more your face will change, more your walk will change, more your talk will change, more where you will be and where you will not be around certain people will change. More your behavior will change. There will be more and more of that rubbish. May it be that we receive that what is right. Let's go. Who writes on your heart? That's what I just spoke about now. The flesh. And then you see people in a certain light. Lust. And you see people in a certain light. Depression. Negativity. And later your whole your wanger hangs under your chin. You know? Your wanger hangs under your chin. 
cheeks, under your cheeks under your chin, you know, because you are so absolutely fed up with life, fed up with this and this. Why? Because you are a receiver of a lot of rubbish, and that rubbish is growing in you, and it will become more and more. You will bring forth a harvest. Let it not be so in Jesus' name. Because any spirit, anything can come and write on your heart. But it has no authority to do it unless you give it the authority. Choose that the Holy Spirit, that it will be Him. You look into nature and you allow the Spirit to speak to you and write. You look at people, saved or not saved, and the Spirit will tell you. And He will write compassion. He will write grace. He will write faithfulness in prayer. He will write boldness to speak to them about His love. He will write, can write, there's no moment that you don't want to write something on your heart. Let's say, every day, the Spirit of God wants to write on the tablets of my heart the will of my Father so that I can know the heart of my Father. Amen. Because your name is engraved on Him. Let's leave it there. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. That is what God wants to do. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. I will remember no more. Why? Next point. Those words have no eternal value for God. I will remember no more. God is not, what's the English word? Forgetful. It's not that he cannot remember now what happened. He chooses to say, what you've done has no eternal value for him. What has eternal value for him is the fact that you came in brokenness and repentance and you have surrendered yourself to him. doesn't matter what happened in the past. He don't want to think about it because it's rubbish. It has no eternal value. But he remembers the day when you gave yourself to him. When you came back and you got discouraged because you fell in it again. But even you, though you were discouraged and your emotions said, you cannot ask for forgiveness again. You went beyond your, your performance. You went beyond your emotions. And you said, God, here I am again. And you feel broken. You feel flat, flat on earth. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> flat. But he sees how you're coming into that place. I am nothing, Lord. And he adds value through his words to you. He adds value, value to you through his word. Those words about your sins and your lawless acts. To God it has no eternal value. He's not going to think about that. When I allow him to change me. There we go. Why, do, why does your past weaknesses, sin, have eternal value for you? What people have done, what they have done to you. Somebody hurt you or you went through a certain... Where are we now? What did I say? Something of the past. You make it valuable. How? You give value to what people did to you and somebody must pay for that. I've been hurt. And therefore I feel I'm nothing. And so I have such a value to my hurt. I keep that word so much that I need people all the time to compliment me. All the time to say I'm wonderful. All the time to accept me. All the time to count me as precious. And if they don't do it all the time, I will see myself as not valuable, with no meaning, useless here on earth. Why? 
Because somewhere, I give some words of the past such a value. I'm keeping it so. For what? Let it go. And receive the eternal word of how precious you are in him. Amen? Are you with me? Great. Let's go. Are you a receiver of the word of forgiveness or what? Let's leave it there. Six. We have seven points. Seven, six is a carrier. You are not just a receiver. But when you receive it, you are not like that road that the seed fell on the road and then the birds came and chuk, 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 and the seed is gone. The rock seed in the rocky places and nothing could grow. You can carry the word. You have the capacity that you heard the word on a Sunday and it's not based on your memory but in your spirit through what you allow God to do when you got into the word on a Sunday and in the night time or whenever you are spending time with the word. You allow it that the spirit will put it so in you that you are able to carry it. Are you with me? Because you have the ability to carry rejection with you. The word of rejection. You have the ability to be a carrier of stress. The words of stress. And the words is, look what is happening there. And that is happening. So you most probably will have a crisis. All those words, you take it to you. And you carry it. Therefore, you know that you're supposed to stress if you are in any way responsible. With all the stress that you are carrying. The words of stress. The words of compromise. You carry compromise in your heart. And when pastor is saying, deal with this, you say something else. Because there's certain words in you. You carry the words of compromise. You're not carrier of the word of God. Become a carrier of the word of God. Amen. And throw the rest down. No, it's, the load is too heavy. Many times the load is so heavy because we are carrying the words of our past, the words of fears, stress, humiliation, inferiority, whatever, our performance and all that insecurities. No, 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 no. How will you throw it off? Only by being a carrier of his word, by receiving his word. Amen? There's a time, there's a place, there's a receiver, there's a carrier. You are, let's say I am, a letter from Christ. Written, known, and read by everyone. By who? Are you sure? You think then we're supposed to change a little bit? Maybe just a little bit at least. Then everybody will know what we stand for. And everybody will understand the gospel and understand God's love for them. If we just change at least a little bit. People know. They read. Are you with me? Let's carry on for time's sake. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He has committed to us the message. Share the word that you, what you carry. That you carry. What you carry. The ministry of reconciliation. There's a word that you carry. And there where you go, you won't believe it, but some other time you're going to open your mouth and you're going to say what you want to say. See, if you are fed up and you have this irritation with someone and you carry this word of irritation and you can justify your irritations and even give more words for that irritations. More and more and more and more and more. Some other time it's just going to come through. And you will share the word that you carry. You will share the word that you carry. You have these fears about certain things. Somewhere, somewhere, somehow, you will share that words of fear that you carry. You will have those words of criticism and judgment. You can smile and give a holy smile to whoever you want to. But some other time, through that holy smilish face, you're going to, boom, it's going to come through what you carry. What you carry is going to come out. Let's say, what I carry is going to come out. Okay. May God help us with that. Amen. Next point. Do you carry the word of religion? Compromise. The first one I want to say 
Once again, a letter from Christ, written, known, and read by everyone. You know, when you're a carrier of a specific word, there's the boss, and the boss is coming in. We always say, they can read you like a book. They can read you like a book. And the boss just walked past. And you greeted him, and he greeted you. And based on the way that he greeted you, and his face, and his Houding, his attitude. Nie my attitude is a gesintheid man. Say houding, say. Body language, whatever. Call it then body language. There's a message immediately. You just saw him for five seconds, but you go back in the office. Oh, guys, the boss is in this mood. Today we're going to suffer. Just stay awake. Make as if you really work. And, you know, and smile at him and bring him some coffee, and there's a whole strategy for the whole day based on the five seconds that you saw the boss. hundred times more it's supposed to be through you, your life, the message of Christ. You as a carrier of the message from Christ. You as a carrier from the eternal word from heaven. When they see you, they know we can expect something great to be said by that lady today. I have an expectation to hear something fresh. I feel feeling stale. I'm feeling less like down and out. But as I look at that lady, I know if I would go to her, something fresh will come to me. When I just look at her, something fresh will come to me. Amen. That's a carrier of the words from heaven. Who we supposed to be and will be in Jesus' name. As we walk out here. Last one. A specific final performance is set aside for the word of God. What does that mean? Let's go. Jesus made specific performances by which many words are fulfilled. Many times when something would happen, where Jesus walked and it, it says, He did this so that the word will be fulfilled, spoken by the prophet Isaiah. You know that? And so, my brother, my sister, there where you walk, it must be. And you did this. And Paul did this as it was spoken by the Lord in himself in heaven. And on earth it happened as it is in heaven. The word spoken over your life has been fulfilled step by step, step by step, as you walk through the word, through the word, into that. And the word from heaven is fulfilled in your life. There's a specific final performance through your life. Of what? Of the word that is set in heaven about Cornelius, about Anneli, about Sejaba. Hello. About Willem. That word that is there. <sighs> A specific final performance of what? Of you. No, of the word. Shining forth of the word. It is fulfilled. <sighs> As you walk, that word. <sighs> In a year time, that word. Next week, this word is fulfilled. That word is fulfilled. So the words are fulfilled. Everybody say the word has been fulfilled. <laughs> are you with me? It's really spiritual. But there's a word from heaven. Okay? And that word needs to be fulfilled. There need to be a specific final performance where his radiant glory will shine forth through you as you choose his word and walk according to his word. His radiant beauty will shine forth more and more and more and more as the word is fulfilled through your life. Amen. Let's go. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The word will be successful. There will be a specific final performance of success through your life. The success of heaven will be shown through your life. That's what he's saying. That is, if the word from God is shown through your life, 
success is shown through your life, but success for, according to the definition of success in heaven. God has a desire for his success to be shown forth through your life. That's why you are also called trophies of his victory. Trophies of his victory. More than conquerors. Trophies of his victory. Bragging about him as your God. Let's finish off. The word of the flesh has a specific final performance right before the final performance of the true word of God. The word of the flesh normally has a final specific performance right before the final performance of the true word of God. Israel. 430 years under the oppression of the Egyptians. But there's a word that God will set them free and take them to the land Canaan that he has promised our ancestors. Not Isaac, not Jacob, not Isaac, but Abram. Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and through Jacob it was Israel, and through Israel it was us, and there was a lot in Egypt to be received, and then now for 430 years it's just slavery. And that word is still there. The word is still there. And the Spirit of God is waiting for the people to receive it accurately. There's a time set aside for it to happen. Hello? Israel has missed many times, even Abram. But there's a time set aside by God's grace that will come again if we miss it. If we miss it. And after 430 years, a few years later, they come to the Jordan. And that what was promised for hundreds of years before. Within one day, they abort it. Within one day, they let it go. They destroy it, that word. Within one day, what was promised for a hundred years before that time, the people couldn't receive it. They couldn't take that promise and put it on the ground. And God said, turn around and die in the desert. And then after 40 years, the new generation could take the word. My brother, my sister, sometimes when it's the, the worst, there's the, the most screaming in your ears. It's because the enemy is really stressed. Because it's the, the, the point of final breakthrough for your life. After all these hundreds of years, Satan knows, here they are at the Jordan. They need to understand the words of the past. You are slaves under a lot of giants, and that giants are called Egypt. Egypt was a giant that put you there and take you by, took you by the neck and put you there. Do, 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 do. If you don't do, I kill. And I killed. And that for 430 years. They come a little bit later in their life, and they know the word of a giant when they saw the giants. They forgot the word from their God. Caleb and Joshua didn't forget the words from their God. But they reacted on the words of the past. They said, we cannot go there again. Then we rather go back. My brother, my sister, by God's grace, may God help you to deal with the words from the past. Amen? To deal with the words from the past. So that when you need to cross the Jordan and the enemy wants to bring his best strategy to you, that will, you can go beyond it because you know the word. Because God has said. Enemy will say, yes, the word says. But Jesus said, but God also says. But God also says. And Satan had to leave Jesus. Satan need to leave and you need to cross. Only how, if you can say, but also the word says. But also the word says. And then the word will be fulfilled in and through your life. God, give us the grace in the name of Jesus. Give us your grace, Lord, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will raise the standard, Lord. And let there be such a fullness of your word. Let your word dwell in us richly, richly. There will be such a richness of your word that even though around us we see nothing of the riches, 
coming our way, even though around us we just see intimidation. God, help us to stay with you. Help us to reach out to you when we see darkness, when we see the void, when we see the emptiness. That we will know, my God is with me, and my God that is with me, the Spirit of God that is with me, is waiting for me to receive your word. Father, and you have the faith, Father, that I will receive the word. And the Spirit that is watching over me, that is with me, that is hemming me in from behind and before, laying his hand on me, will bring forth the light. Will bring forth the light. Let's stand in his presence. God, I pray for every man, every woman here to have that breakthrough. If you know you are standing here and there's too many voices, there's too many words bringing confusion, and you need God to give clarity. Clarity must come in your heart. Clarity. It's too muddy. And you know and you see that areas of your life. Hello? You see that formless areas, that empty areas, that areas of darkness. The Spirit is waiting for you to react on the word and tonight into some of that areas God wants to speak forth his word won't you raise just your hands and let's just receive that God I pray for every man every woman reaching out to you that right now you will speak to them God that they will receive your word and as from tonight they will not be the same again each one going out here and they choose not to receive this word Lord let them experience the reality of rubbish. Let them experience the reality of that muddy, messy place. Let them experience the reality of formless, empty darkness. So that they can come to repentance. But every other man and woman, Lord, in this place, reaching out to you. God, I pray that you will give them the breakthrough. Now and step by step, from glory to glory each day that there will be more light and less darkness there will be more of christ formed and less of a formless place more of your presence and less emptiness in every area of our lives that is what we trust you for and what that is what we pray in jesus name hallelujah lord thank you jesus